Hey, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to talk about how I fixed my Google Wi-Fi issue with uh, an Edge Router X. Now the reason I got one of these Edge Router X modems or routers is because it uh, has something called traffic shaping and quality of service on it. So what that will do is it'll actually help your connection when you max it out by something called buffer bloat. Now I actually came by the solution by accident. What happened was I was just on Reddit looking around trying to see how to fix this and when I looked around someone said that when they upload to Google Drive or for in my instance YouTube my network would go to a halt. So this one person said this is buffer port and they said Google Wi-Fi cannot traffic shape so there is something else that you'll need to do for that. Now I was wondering what is buffer bloat? So I looked it up here. Buffer bloat is a cause of high latency and packet switch networks caused by excess of buffering of packets. So in my situation whenever I would experience this my internet would completely stop working so I won't be able to load web pages, can't really do much of anything. So what I took, what I figured out is uh, by scrolling a little bit down, someone had actually recommended that they fix their issue with an Edge Router X. Let me just see where it is here. Right here. So this guy named Durian Busk had found a solution. He added an Edge Router X onto his network and I was able to fix it. Now before you buy this item, you may not need to buy it at all. First you'll need to figure out if there's a different way to fix it. I would maybe try calling your internet service provider, see if they have a new router available that actually fixes this issue so you don't have to buy anything. That's your first option. Second option you can do, if you can even buy a new router, now you might have to make sure that it does have quality of service and traffic shaping built in. And most uh, lower end routers don't have that yet, like I know the Google Wi-Fi doesn't have it. So you may have to spend quite a bit of money to get that started. So now this Edge Router X works out to about $50 US or $90 Canadian. So you can purchase one of these at uh, your local store. I got mine at Memory Express, but I'm sure you can find it anywhere else. In order to set up the edge router, it is a little tricky. You'll have to follow this uh, tutorial by Crosstalk Solutions and uh, it'll just get you up and running because it's not like other ones where you just plug and play. You'll have to go through and do some uh, settings on your computer. Once you're all set up, I'll show you what to do. Now just to reference how this is working, I have my, my current setup as uh, the Google Wi-Fi is behind my modem from my internet service provider. So in this new setup, the service provider's modem, the, the LAN port from there will go into the F0 on your edge router. And then from there, F1 will go to the internet, the, in, you know, the input port on your Google Wi-Fi or the WAN port, whatever you want to call it. And that's where we get started. Once you plug it in and uh, you've already ran the setup from the tutorial here from Crosstalk Solutions, it'll actually start working already. And this is where we get to the setup of the edge router. Once your edge router is set up, just click the wizards tab up here and we'll get started. Click on the WAN plus 2 LAN 2 option here and then disable the firewall. Just because the Google Wi-Fi already has firewall built in, you don't need two of them. And make sure this is set to F0 up here. DHCP is on. And then down here, you don't need to change any of this. You'll only need to change this if you have uh, two service providers, but I'd say 99% of you only have one. And then set your username and password. For me I'm just going to leave that as my the one I have currently set up. Hit apply and you'll have to reboot after on your modem. 
Once it's done rebooting, let's go over to the Services tab. When you look in here, you'll actually see the active leases. Like it'll show your Google Wi-Fi and everything on there. So what you'll need to do is I've actually already set it as a static IP. So there's going to be a button here, set as static. That way it doesn't change its IP address. So when you've set it to static, this is actually the default one, the .38. I don't know why this company does that. It's a little wonky. They make it start at 38. Most other providers start at 100. But uh, that's not an issue. So once you've set up the static IP, this is where the fix happens. Go to the quality of service tab. So when I run a speed test, I'm usually averaging about 11.8 for my download speed and 2.25 for my upload. You can figure this out by running a speed test on speedtest.net or fast.com. So what you'll need to do is put your policy name up here, put uh, F0 as your WAN interface, apply to upload and download, so again 2.25 for my upload and 11.8 for my download. And then just hit apply. When you hit apply, you, it'll save it. And then we'll go to the firewall area. Now, for you, if you're not running any servers like um, Plex or anything that needs to be seen from outside your network, this is all you need to do. But if you are running things like that, you will need to do a few more things. Before I show you the firewall, rules here. The reason why this all works is by setting the 11.8 and 2.25 it actually gives you a bit of a buffer zone so that uh, there's some headroom so that if you actually did try and load a website it's going to load because when you do a speed test after that's been applied you're probably going to get like 11 and 2. So it is saving a bit of your bandwidth in order to do other things like load websites, you can even open YouTube and stuff while uploading a YouTube video. Before I couldn't do that. Now here is the firewall section. Just click on the NAT area and click uh, destination NAT rule. I already have mine set up so I'll show you how mine looks. So my description, I've set this as a DMZ so I call it DMZ. You can call it whatever you want. What this does is for all the ports coming into your from your ISP modem, that's already set as DMZ to the edge router. Now, from the edge router, if you're running things that are like any web services, you'll need to take all your ports from there and forward it to your Google Wi-Fi as well. And then your Google Wi-Fi probably have its own port forwarding rules as well, so it's going to be three hops just to get what, you're, what you want to get going. So here we have this set up so that your inbound interface of F0 will translate to 192.168.1.38 that we set up earlier and put all protocols and pick the F0. Now this is all the information I found online. Like this is pretty much it. Now this would work, but uh, I did have one other issue. When I did this, when I would uh, click visit my server from outside my network, it worked, totally worked fine. So I would use my phone, not be on Wi-Fi, connect to my server, everything's good. But I do have a dynamic DNS setup, so when you know when you type in you know your name at noip.com, it would work outside the network, would like it's intended to, but when you're inside the network, it wasn't uh, forwarding it over to the Google Wi-Fi, it was getting stuck. So there is an extra step to take care of. So once you hit save here, you'll need to do port forwarding. And that's what I couldn't find online. Now by using the DDNS server, what I did is I took every port, so one to six, five, three, five, three. This is all the ports that you can use. It'll make it the TCP and UDP, both of them forward it to the static IP that we set up earlier and then same ports description I just this is anything you can put all ports and then hit apply 
Once you hit apply, you should be able to access your dynamic DNS server from outside your network and inside your network. Before it wasn't working with inside the network because of the port forwarding rules. It was, it was getting to the right place, but once you were in the network, it was getting stuck. This will actually send it back and uh, you'll get it running. Now, in order to test this, just make sure you type in your dynamic DNS and uh, from inside your network and outside, make sure all your port forwarding is set up on your Google Wi-Fi modem as well, and you're good to go. Now, if this was able to help you at all, please like and subscribe my video. It is pretty technical, so if you don't know how to do this or if you're kind of confused by watching all of it, please, you know, hire a professional or get someone who does this for a living. Okay, so if you need more help uh, or are interested in more content like this, please like and subscribe and uh, check my channel for more content. I hope this fixed your Google Wi-Fi buffer bloat issues. Have a great day.